Hi there, my name's Chris and welcome to the Chaotic Good Story Club. I'm going to do a quick video review of Known in the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, which I read just recently. Um, Known in the Ninth is the third book in the Locked Tomb series. Um, it was originally going to be the Locked Tomb trilogy, but there ended up being four stories in there, so this is the third of four. Um, the original, uh, the first book in the series was uh, Gideon the Ninth, which is one of my favourite books of recent years. Um, I'm going to assume most people have, or at least, have at least read Gideon and Harrow the Ninth, um, because otherwise I'm going to have to explain a lot that won't make sense and stuff. If you haven't read Gideon the Ninth, go and read it. Um, tagline, basically, lesbian necromancers in space. Um, also heard referred to as the Warhammer that fucks. Um, so yeah, go forth. If you like grimdark, uh, sci-fi mixed with fantasy, um, even, you know, young adult, whatever that means, um, it's fantastic. Go and read Gideon the Ninth, then read Harrow, then come watch this, then, then by Nona. Um, cool, good, right. Um, so, obviously... In Gideon the Ninth, we are introduced to the Dominicus system, the, the Empire, where the, the Emperor, who is God, is also a necromancer who resurrected the whole system and is immortal. And he has uh, also sort of mortal um, servants, helpers, called lictors. And in the first book, Gideon, who has a love hell of hate relationship, I don't know, but pretty much a hate relationship uh, for most of the book with um, Harrow, Harrow Hark Nonagesimus, um, who is the the necromancer prime of the of the ninth house. Gideon and Harrow travel to uh, the first house to take part in the the lictoral trials, and um, meet representatives of all the other houses and people die and things go horribly wrong and they kind of find out the truth about each other and yeah it's all it's all very fun it's all very emotional um and i was always interested to see how that would go uh, would go forward in the second book harrow we have harrow um now sort of a lector um meets the Emperor, discovers a lot more of the, the deeper world building, uh, why the Emperor and the Lictor can't really come back to um, the home system uh, because they're fighting things called resurrection beasts, uh, which are variously described as having a di looking different to everybody and they send everybody insane unless you're, you've popped your soul into the sort of other realm that the necromancers use called the river. Um, Resurrection Beasts, very, very bad. Um, these were originally generated when the Dominicus system had been destroyed and then resurrected. And they take that quite personally um, for reasons we don't yet understand. This will probably get resolved in Electo, um, which is the, the fourth book to come. And there's a lot of reveals as to who Gideon really was, because Gideon was a foundling on the Ninth House, and about rebellions against the Emperor, and both amongst his, his lictors and other people, and people who have survived from the mass killings at the end of Gideon the Ninth, and what they've got up to. And that leads us to Nona. Um, Obviously, the also the first book told um, almost entirely from Gideon's point of view. Second book told almost entirely from Harrow's point of view. This book told almost entirely from Nona's point of view. So who's Nona? And that's kind of the the key tension, as it were, um, in Nona the Ninth. It's quite clear from the way she's described that Nona is in Harrow's body. Um, but they're not. The people she's with aren't sure if it is Nona, or I assume Gideon. And a lot of the book is just sort of them trying to find out, ask your questions about her dreams. It's about almost just them surviving, because they're away on this 
previously conquered world of the Empire, which is now rebelling, and there's a resurrection beast approaching, and everyone's going mad, and, everything, and the whole society is just falling to pieces. And the, one of the nicest things in Nona the Ninth is one, Nona herself is just a delight. She is just a young girl, she's in the body of like a 19 year old, um, but she's only actually been alive for six months and originally had to learn everything, now kind of has a sort of teenager's intellect and character and she, she just loves everyone and she just takes everything totally chill in her stride and Nona is uh, just absolutely lovely and it's a shame uh, what happens to her. Um, the photo I've just moved to is from the cover of Gideon the Ninth to something I knocked up on mid-journey that was meant to be Gideon. Um, just for something else to look at, because, you know, my face is. Um, known as lovely. But there's also the relationship she has with the people that she's staying with. Who are, again, spoilers for the earlier books, um, Camilla Hecht, who was the cavalier of the... Seventh House? Yes. No, Sixth House. Cavalier of the Sixth House. Um, who also, at times, is possessed for a brief period by the spirit of her necromancer, Palamides. Um, who died at the end of Gideon, but because he was such a kick-ass necromancer, kept his soul in a bubble on this side of the river so he could still communicate with people but not just become a howling revenant of a ghost because um, he was always very interested in ways of becoming a lictor, becoming a mortal that didn't actually involve the sacrifice that is involved in it and that's really nice the relationship they have with each other being able to communicate only really by telling people to tell the other something when they're, they're possessed um, and just the niceness of the pair of them compared to, you know, a lot of other people that are going about. It's just really, really nice. And they're also with um, Pira, who is in the the body of the lictor, Gideon, who was her necromancer, but she managed... She stayed as a consciousness in his mind, and after he died, she resurrected... She took over the body and is now kicking about in that body. Which is complex. It gets confusing. Um, and Pira's just lovely. Pira's, you know, was, I think, a cop or some sort of, you know, military person in before their development and tries to take care and is, is the one who's kind of getting involved with the, the resistance and obtains things for for Nona and for Camilla. Of course, things come to a head. Obviously, this world's about to be swallowed up and everything's going horribly wrong. There's a civil war going on. There is also the forces of the Emperor. That's my puppy, Kira, in the background. Um, and that all comes to a head. A lictor comes. And, of course, we were always heading to, ever since the end of Harrow and the, with the a lot of the big point of Gideon the Ninth was that the locked tomb on under the Ninth House, where it turns out the Emperor's Cavalier is buried because she was mad and uh, couldn't be allowed to continue going about. But Harrow was in love with her, so Nona and everybody end up back there and stuff evolves. I don't want to spoil too much. I mean, that's probably quite a bit of spoilers already. Um... But, you know, it was pretty predictable that we were going to end up back on the 9th. The, the, the exact how and the where and the who with and what happens, I will leave to your reading of the book. Um, but I like Nona. It's not as... None of the books are as good as Gideon was, because Gideon is just like a perfectly formed book in itself, even though it leaves a lot open-ended. Um, it's just a lovely character arc. Harrow is clearly a middle book. And... Nona, as much as she is lovely and the everything is lovely and the the development of things, it's not quite a complete story and it's not even quite a complete middle book. 
I mean, the story is interspersed with, like, the testament of John, who is the emperor, who it sounds like he's speaking to Harrow. But it also sounds like he's speaking to Harrow in the past, almost as if he was with her when Harrow broke in to the locked tomb and fell in love with Electo the Cavalier as a child. And that's really interesting, whether that's just Harrow's perception or he was talking to Harrow while Harrow's soul was elsewhere. You know, he's the emperor, we're dealing with space travel and necromancy here, time travel, and the exact cause of events is up for debate. Um, And that's interesting. You get a lot of interesting info about who the emperor was back before the resurrection. Um... He doesn't come across entirely too well. Um, Predictably, people that end up as emperors rarely do. Um, But it's interesting, and it is very much set up for uh, a climactic um, finish. One enduring thing about the Locked Tomb series that is very fun is the idea of individuality and personality not necessarily being connected to your body. There are multiple characters who end up possessing other bodies, either to survive or just because they're manipulating them. Um, In some cases, this is under duress. In some cases, this is consensual. And that's that's quite interesting, obviously, because Palamides um, occasionally inhabits Camilla's body. Uh, We see... Ianthe, the the lictor who ascended at the end of Gideon the Ninth, um, possessing her dead cavalier's former body, so she can go and do things in his body while not actually visiting, because that's a, a danger with you know resurrection beasts around. And like Pura is, I think, possessing somebody else's body. Um, she's possessing uh, Gideon's old body, Gideon the lictor, not Gideon the cavalier's body. Um, just that idea of you know, your motivations and things not necessarily being uh, tied to your presentation is is, is very interesting. Um, And it's fun, and it leads to a lot of quite confusing characterisation because you get people being introduced to Nona, and Nona has no idea who they are or the, the greater context of the character. But we do, because we recognise them from previous books, and it leads to a lot of interesting character work. And it's also, I think, quite a fun way to have characters who are genderqueer, even if the initial character might not have been. They end up being, because they end up in a body that is not their original designation. And there's a lot of... Interesting boundary pushing and, and grey areas that are being explored that are, in a lot of ways, completely sideways to, to the main plot. Um, and I think that's good. It shows that the, a book and a story has range. Um, I love this series. Nona is probably the least of the three books so far. Um... But given given it's you know the third the third of four, it's kind of a middle middle book. So it's really interesting for those of us who are invested in the characters and what's gone before. I would not recommend it as an intro book to the series. You would be confused as hell. Um, but I really enjoyed it, and I think. Uh, Everybody should check out Gideon the Ninth and follow the series through. I cannot wait for Electo, um, which I hope, think, is coming out next year. Um, and as the, the little tagline from Alex Arrow says on the book, um, you will all love Nona, and Nona loves you. And um, it's, a, it's a very lovely book. It's very sad. Um... It's a good chapter in the in the wider story, um, so check it out if you've already enjoyed Gideon and Harrow. Definitely check it out. If you haven't checked out the Locked Tomb, go and uh, get Gideon the Ninth. Um, 
highly recommended series. Um, thank you very much.